Well, some new college wrestling coaches clean house when they take over, but uh, Eastern Michigan's head coach David Bulliard has promoted Luke Smith to full-time assistant after being three years of part-time assistant to the Eagles in Ypsilanti, Michigan. He joins us now. Does Luke Smith. Luke, how are you? Good. How are you doing? Good. Congratulations on the pay grade raise. Thank you. It's been a, it's been a while at it. It's good to, to make a little more money doing, doing what you love to do. What will you do with all the additional cash? Uh, I plan on trying to live the same, same type of life so, so I can save up. And, uh, you know, I don't want to want to go out and now that I have a little bit more money and just go, just go spend it. Uh, so it's good to have a little more money saved up in the, in the bank. Not going to be going crazy. No, not cash. too much. Okay. So the promote from within philosophy, I think, is a solid idea, especially when you come into a program and there's a solid coach on board, that being you. Uh, Derek Del Porto, who you worked for before, left the program in great shape uh, after eight years. Uh, talk a little bit about Del Porto's departure. Was that a surprise to you? Um, we kind of, it, it was a surprise that it happened um, that quick, but uh, we kind of knew that uh, eventually he wanted to go into more you know, I thought he was going to looking to take more of an administrative role, or, or that he didn't want to, you know, continue coaching, uh, you know, forever. So we had, we were kind of, we were ready for it, and um, we had kind of expected it, but uh, we didn't expect it to all happen um, so quickly. It's not like you haven't known Del Porto for, or not Del Porto, but Bolliard for a while. He too has been a member of the staff, so it would make sense, really, what he did. Uh, did, how long was the discussion? You know, do you want to be the assistant coach? Do you want to stay? Uh, how did that go? Oh, that was kind of always the plan, uh, that once Del Porto, um, stepped down and Dave took over that, uh, that I, I would, I would be, you know, promoted, uh, obviously still had to go, go through the process and, you know, um, other people applied and, and, uh, you know, still had to do, do a little interview with him, but, um, you know, he knew that. Since I've known him for so long, we, we were on the same team together. Uh, uh, he coached me for a year when I was at Central, and then being here for three years and knowing his coaching philosophy and uh, having a similar philosophy, that, that it would be the right fit. The program continues to take big strides. It's uh, what we call educated strides. It's not like you're doing so and getting there and being surprised. Uh, it seems like you're, uh, you know, you've been a big part of that. You've coached uh, in 10 NCAA qualifiers as uh, Mid-American Conference Championship runner-ups as well. Talk a little bit about your time with the team and the, uh, uh, the improvements the team has enjoyed. Yeah, I think, um, you know, when, I, when Dave and I were in college, uh, Eastern Michigan was not, you know, they didn't have uh, that, that good of a program and we're kind of we're really kind of uh, changing um, – changing the perception of Eastern Michigan wrestling. And it's been uh, a very re rewarding thing to do, to, you know, when you, when you see the, the growth of the program and the program start to do things they, they've never done before. Um, we, I think we do a great job of recruiting the right types of kids. Um, you know, we beat three top 25 programs this past year. And in our starting lineup, we only had two kids that were high school state champions. So I think we do a good job of finding the right types of kids and then, then developing them. Your coaching experience didn't start at Eastern Michigan. In fact, you had some valuable experience from Old Dominion University and Central Michigan. Um, talk to us a little bit about uh, Old Dominion first, because uh, we, we're going to spend a little bit of time at Central Michigan, because you, as a wrestler there, enjoyed uh, a pretty good degree of success. So talk to us about the experience you got from Old, Old Dominion University. I think it was... Um it was very rewarding being there for two years. Um, learn, I learned a lot from from uh, Steve Martin, and it was good to go. F um, obviously, Coach Bradley had success, but it was good to go to a guy who had a, a totally different type of coaching philosophy, um, personality to to see so something different, um, like a different end of the spectrum, and and have the opportunity to get away. You know, I, I've always enjoyed being in the Midwest and, and and love it, but it was good to you know go experience and live in a different area for a while, but. Um, I mean, um, Old Dominion was great. I had some great guys I had the opportunity to work with, like uh, James Nicholson and Kyle Hutter, and they've had you know some some really good lightweights that uh, that uh, I had the opportunity to work with. And uh, Mike Dixon's a great guy at, at Old Dominion, and uh, John Cerritos was was there at the time. So it was it was a great learning process. Uh, those guys, I mean, Steve te teaches you how to work uh, really hard, and 
you know, especially with, with the recruiting. And I learned a lot as far as the recruiting process and just uh, basically putting in the work. You, you mentioned Mike Dixon. Were you surprised at all they elevated him to associate head coach? Uh, no, I'm not. He, did, um, he, does, he does a lot of work there, and he, he, uh, he's put a lot of time in, and I, I think he's earned it. Kind of a detail guy, isn't he? Yeah, he is. Really good um, all, with all the administrative stuff and handling a lot of that paperwork, and, and, um, and he just he works, he works his butt off. Are you a detail guy? Uh, yeah, I am, with, I, am, I am with some things. Other things I should, pro- I should probably uh, need to be a little bit more of a detail guy, but as far as like technique and things like that, um, obviously doing the, the little things right are the, are the difference between finishing uh, and not finishing on you know, some of the best guys in the country. So I, th- I think you have to be to be successful at this sport. As part of the elevation of your job, I would imagine your duties are elevated as well. Some more time in the office, uh, perhaps less time on the mat, or maybe more of both. Uh, what are the expectations of you by Coach Bullard? Um, well, basically, yeah, there's going to be more, some more responsibilities as far as administrative work. And, you know, it's, it's going to be a learning process, doing things that, uh, you know, that, that he's been doing over the last few years. But, you know, I, I look forward to those challenges and, and – you know, I, I really like, you know, once you've been, been re- just wrestled for so long, you think you know the sport really well and are ready to be a coach, and then you see the administrative side and, and all these duties, and, it, and it's, a, it's, it's a learning process, but um, I, I enjoy the process, and I'm, I look forward to, you know, learning some, some of the, how to do some of these administrative duties and, and just, uh, you know, the more responsibilities. It's surprising how deep the paperwork can get at times, isn't it? Yeah, it's uh, it's it's tough because uh, you know you obviously you, you love wrestling and uh, and you want you want to spend time worrying about the wrestling and stuff or being in the room and uh, you know dr- drilling and, and those things. But there's a lot of uh, a lot of office hours put in where, where it's just uh, paperwork and and uh, things like that. You spend so much time in Michigan over the last several years and going to school there and whatnot. Coming out of Chippewa Falls, Wisconsin, is it a little difficult to cross the state line? Um, yeah, it's, uh, I mean, it was, uh, <laughs> when I went to Central, it was a nine-and-a-half-hour drive back home because you have to go down through Chicago. And, up, and sometimes it was longer. It all depended on that Chicago traffic. Uh, uh, Eastern's a little, a little bit easier because we're right off of, uh, right off 94, so it's about, I can make it, uh, now that I have an eye pass, I can get through those tolls really quick. Is I can make it at about eight, um, but yeah, I, that's part of the reason why I wanted to come back to the Midwest because uh, I'm really close to my family. I wanted to be a little closer to home, uh, closer to Wisconsin. But uh, you know, I've been in Michigan so long that it's it's become a second home for me. Um, eight hour trip, no speeding tickets. Yeah, none yet. Really? Yeah. Good for you. I had to take a uh, college level course. Because they identified me as a potential habitual violator. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've, I try to find a, I try to find, a, I try to find a driver like you, and then then get behind them enough where where they get pulled over first. So it's it's worked out pretty well so far. Lightning Luke Smith joins us. You you qualified and wrestled for uh, one of the great coaches out there in Tom Borelli. Uh, Central Michigan was your home. Talk about uh, Central Michigan, the Mid American Conference, as uh, as a wrestler. I mean, you came out of high school two times a champ. Uh yeah. I mean, I, I really enjoyed it at at Central, and it was a uh, you know a lot of people were kind of surprised that I chose Central Michigan because being in a you know northwestern Wisconsin, not a lot of people had heard of CMU at that time, um, and I was being recruited by Wisconsin, Minnesota, you know, Nebraska, a lot of a lot of bigger name schools, and but I just felt like that was the right fit. For, for me, um, you know, for, as far as the, you know, it was it was Division One, but wasn't too overwhelmingly big, and um, I really liked Co- Coach Borelli. I, I liked like the campus and, and the guys on the team. Uh, um, that's where that's where I first met Dave. Was on my, my recruiting visit, um, Coach Bulliard, and um, I feel like it was a great choice. Um, looking back at it now, over the last. Um four years your team has has beaten two top 25 teams and as i mentioned earlier uh the eagles continue to improve each and every day uh each and every season what are the expectations this year 
um, our expectations are, you know, we, we're not, we're not content, um, you know, just beating top 25 teams. We want to get guys on, on the podium th- this year. And, uh, eventually we want guys, you know, competing to be, to be national champions are just cause we're not, you know, one of those bigger conference schools. It doesn't change our, our expectations of our guys. We still expect them to be competing to win national, national championships and, and, um, and to be all Americans. And I, I think if you want to be successful, you, you have to have that expectation from your guys and you need them to expect that from themselves. Uh, so we've, we've done, it's been a progression. We've done better every year, but we really um, want someone to step up and get on the podium and, you know, to put our, you know, to be the kind of the, the face of our program to show that, uh, you know, you can come here and, and be really successful and, and, uh, you know, you're just as capable of, you know, being an All-American National Champion here as, as any of those other schools. From Del Porto to Bolliard to Smith, the program continues to grow, continues to improve. In order to be in the top 25, you have to consistently beat top 25 teams. I think you guys understand that potentially. Probably one of your goals is to, uh, you know, hit the top 25 on a regular basis and then move from there. Uh, surely looking to dominate the conference as well. We look forward to seeing the success that you guys put on the mats and the improvements uh, that you exhibit. It's going to be a fun season, Luke. Yeah, I mean, I'm excited. Uh, you know, with, with how tough this conference has gotten with the additions of Missouri, Northern Iowa, and Old Dominion, um, you know, if, if you're if you're like top three in the conference, you're going to be top 25 and and be have a, have a really good team. Who do you want to thank for uh Obviously, the opportunities. I got to believe there's people in your life that have been standing behind you and encouraging you. Who are they? Uh, I'd like to thank my, you know, my, my family, my parents, who used to make that nine and a half hour drive up up to Mount Pleasant just to watch one dual meet and drive all the way back for you know that kind of support has, has been awesome. Um, you know, Co- Coach Borelli and Coach Martin, Coach Del Porto for all. You know, um, I'm going to have learned a lot from all of them, and we'll, we'll take that you know with me. Um, and continue, as I continue to learn, but uh, it's been a great process of, of uh, everywhere, everywhere I've been, I've, I've learned a lot and, you know, continue to learn. Still got all your hair? Yeah, I do. And a boy. Yeah. And a boy. One day you'll be a head coach and you'll be missing <laughs> half of it and going, where the heck did my hair go? Yeah, Coach Borelli blames uh, uh, the, the loss of the rest of his hair on, on coaching me. <laughs> <laughs> He's being very generous, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lightning Luke Smith, Eastern Michigan's new assistant, elevated from his previous position by the new head coach, David Bollard. He's uh, been our guest today. The uh, Eagles much stronger for retention and uh, surely much stronger for their position as they go into the fall. Luke, always good to talk to you. Thanks for the time today. And again, congrats on the new job. Thanks, Scott. Good to talk to you, too.